Plan B's stock to flow model is flat out wrong. And I'm surprised so many people still believe in it in 2021. Like Andre Jeek, I love his content, but his recent video about the stock to flow model is based on a faulty foundation because the model has already been thoroughly disproven back in 2020. But I think a lot of people missed that whole ordeal. So that's why I wanted to make this video to share with you the reasons why it's wrong and how Plan B, the creator of the model, pulled a switcheroo on us halfway through. So if this sounds interesting to you at all, then strap in my friend and let's dive right in. Look, I don't wanna be a hater here. I used to believe in the stock to flow model and even defended it against critics. I mean, I even made this video a couple years ago, which got a ton of views. But alas, I want to be intellectually honest with you. So if I see new data, I got to change my mind. And that's the thing with the stock to flow model. It used to make a compelling case of why it's right from a statistics and numbers perspective. And all the naysayers would only make arguments based on logic or deduction. They'd have nothing to say about the the stats behind it. And that's why I didn't listen to them because I wanted to trust the number and trust the stats. But then new arguments did come out that proved that the stats were fundamentally flawed and no one was able to salvage the model. So was stock to flow just a complete joke of a model? Objectively, yes it was. And now it's time to set the record straight. All right, so here's a quick overview of stock to flow or S2F model for those of you who don't remember it or haven't heard of it before. But if you already know what's up, then feel free to skip ahead. Basically, it's a model that ties Bitcoin scarcity to its value or price. And Stock just means how much is out there in terms of existing stockpile or reserves, and flow is the amount produced every year. And remember, that changes because Bitcoin goes through halvings every four years, where the number of BTC released to miners gets cut in half. So you take the stock and divide it by the flow to get the overarching ratio. And when you plot that out, it looks something like this. Now, the uncanny part here is that when you overlay Bitcoin's price action on top, it matches super well. It really looks like the stock to flow ratio is a magnet that pulls Bitcoin's price towards it over time. Now, of course, just making that pretty graph isn't enough to convince people that it works. There was two main arguments that S2F had going for it. First is that the model works for other hard assets like gold as well. And second is that it fulfilled a really special statistical relationship called co-integration. Let's zoom in on the second one because that was the one that kept me believing for a long time. So you probably have heard of correlation before, right? Positive correlation just means that two variables move together in the same direction. An example of this is if you plot a person's height versus their shoe size. That is positively correlated. The taller they are, the bigger the shoe, generally speaking. Whereas negative correlation means that they move in opposite direction. But co-integration is completely different from correlation. Basically, two variables are co-integrated if they move together or the difference between their means remains constant. A great analogy of this is a drunk guy who's walking his dog. Like the drunk guy's headed home and he stumbles around and weaves his path does not walk in a straight line. And the dog is just being a regular dog, right? Just going from side to side, sniffing everywhere and whatnot. But the dog is always connected to the drunk guy with a leash. And that's why their locations are co-integrated because they move together. And the leash is what keeps the difference between their means constant. Now, co-integration is not just some made up random statistics property. It's a legitimate technique introduced by Nobel laureates in 1987. And there are legit tests that you can run to see if two variables are co-integrated, like the Engel Granger test, the Johansson test, and so forth. So what does this have to do with stock to flow model though? Well, to answer this question, we got to look to the work of some stats guys like Marcel Berger, for example. He did a ton of analysis of the S2F model from a statistics perspective. And at first he was like, S2F is wrong because it does not meet some key statistical assumptions and hence falls prey to some Something called spurious regression. But then a few months later, he was like, hold up, there is an exception to the rule that he did not consider. And the exception was that if the variables are co-integrated, then those previous assumptions can be ignored and the model does hold. Well, he crunched a lot of numbers and found out that the two time series, which are Bitcoin's price and its stock to flow ratio, were indeed co-integrated. This was huge because this means that the stock to flow model had strong statistical backing and that's why I was sold. They only said other things like, oh, S2F doesn't work for other coins or 
that it implies the price would go to infinity. I didn't buy any of those criticisms because I was focused on the stats, but that's when the tables turned yet again. Marcel Berger wrote a follow-up piece in mid-2020 explaining that he was wrong yet again because in order to use co-integration, the two variables need to have an equal order of integration. But that turned out to be not the case because he, quote, did not correct for the deterministic elements before determining the order of integration. So that meant that co-integration between Bitcoin's price and its stock to flow ratio would be impossible as defined by the popular angle Granger theory. And remember, this was the key link that was holding together this model in the first place. When I read that piece, it really shook my world because I was like, oh crap, this means that this model that I strongly believed was just a meme. And it wasn't just Marcel Berger, by the way, multiple other people shared their research that came to the same conclusion. And there was no one else offering a case for the other side from the stats world. So with that in mind, S2F was dead and sent to the graveyard with all the other failed models out there, right? Well, not if it was up to plan B. Remember, he's the pseudonymous creator of this theory. And he actually blocked me on Twitter because I was calling him out for being intellectually dishonest and still pushing stock to flow theory even though it's flat out wrong. I mean, I get it, right? His theory is pretty much the only thing that gives him relevance in the Bitcoin space. So he desperately needs and wants it to be true. And in a stroke of luck for him, Bitcoin's price increased after the previous halving in May 2020. So he could still point to that as proof that his model was right. But even then, the model has already shown signs of weakness when the price fell from 60K to 30K recently, and Plan B himself said that if the price stayed sideways for too long, then his model would break. No need to wait in my eyes, I've already explained why it's wrong from a foundational level. But here's the thing, remember the switcheroo I mentioned earlier? Well, when the stats came out and proved Plan B's original S2F model wrong, he came out with a second model that was fundamentally different, but he called it S2FX. And the whole thing was pretty confusing and misleading for the general public because the names were so similar and many people assume that it's just one model when S2F is mentioned, right? They have no idea that it was switched halfway through. And this is key right here because at least his first model was actually promising and worthy of a closer look by reputable statisticians. But his second theory is so wrong and such a joke that no one is really considering it in the first place, besides the moon boys that is. So you kind of see why I like to call this a sleazy switcheroo, because I'm pretty sure that if people knew the background that I'm sharing with you here, they'd reject S2F immediately and unequivocally. And if you're curious, S2FX is what he calls his cross-asset model. Basically, he removes the time component that was causing his model a ton of issues and adds other assets like silver and gold into the mix. And he's like, look, this new model is awesome because it lets you value not only Bitcoin, but gold and silver as well. His new model claims that Bitcoin's price transitions from cluster to cluster and will eventually reach the same levels as silver and gold's market cap. But one huge issue that people point out is that he cherry picks his data for gold and silver to make it even work. I mean, if you look at other data like this plot of gold's market cap to its S2F ratio, or this one of gold's price to its stock to flow ratio, you'll see that gold has no significant correlation to its stock to flow ratio, let alone co-integration. So his new model is broken from the get-go and he can't use gold and silver the way he did. So that's case closed in my book. Now I definitely glossed over a lot of the details here, but I'll leave you some amazing links down below of other articles that tear apart his cross SM model convincingly. Whew. That was exhausting sharing with you all this criticism, but here's some nuance for you. Just because I think this S2F model is wrong, doesn't mean that Bitcoin's price can't be related to its scarcity somehow. I mean, I do think that concept makes intuitive sense, but ideally we'd consider the demand side of the equation too, because S2F only talks about the supply side. And at the end of the day, it comes down to supply and demand. It's basic microeconomics for you. That's why I love looking at on-chain analytics for clues about where Bitcoin is headed next. Because by combining different metrics, we can get a better look at both supply and demand. By the way, if you don't know much about on-chain analysis yet, you should check out my explainer video right here. And also why not watch this video too about the super cycle theory, which also turned out to be laughably wrong or at least too early. Anyways, I'm Kevin from BFB. I'll catch you on the next one and cheers.